Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I have a couple of these firework shells. Now this is basically a miniature version of what would be loaded into mortars and then shot into the sky for a commercial firework show. So what this is, is a little bit of uh, black powder mixed with some stars, which are basically just harder pieces of black powder which burn after the initial explosion. And that is wrapped in some paper and tape, you know, to kind of give it a little bit of pressure so it'll actually explode. Besides being smaller, there's one more difference. These are electrically ignited. Uh, normally they would use a black powder fuse, but black powder fuses do not burn in a vacuum. You can get a fuse to burn underwater through liquid nitrogen, but not in a vacuum chamber because black powder cannot burn if there's no pressure. Which means if I were to put this in a vacuum chamber and it had a fuse leading to it, it just wouldn't ignite. So I'm using the electrical igniter and that way it's all confined until it's actually ignited. So the firework is now wired into the chamber. I'm about to put on the lid and then we'll ignite it. Okay, so you probably can still hear me because this is not under vacuum. I'm about to set off the firework. Okay, time to do it again, but this time we're going to suck out all the air first. All right, so the experiment seems to be more or less a success. At least it better be, because I don't have time to refilm. <laughs> so here's the shell that exploded in the vacuum, and here's the shell that was set off in atmospheric pressure. Now you'll notice something I find quite interesting is this shell is more or less intact. Everything just kind of blew out here, whereas the one in the vacuum was completely destroyed. And I use the same amount of tape, same amount of powder, everything. Uh, the difference here is uh, the one in the atmosphere, you know, had the atmosphere pushing in, providing a little bit of extra force. The one in the vacuum, you know, had an additional 12 pounds per square inch it could work with. So it was actually more powerful. But this one produced a lot more paper, which is a little bit charred but it didn't burn. The stuff that came out of the one in the atmospheric test, most of that paper burned up. You can see there's bits of ash and stuff left over. And that's because it caught fire and burned in the air. But without air, of course it didn't burn. And in fact, you'll notice also there's a lot of these stars and unburned powder left over. That's because once the shell ruptured, rather than continuing to burn in the vacuum, the powder was almost immediately extinguished. The shell that went off in the atmosphere, that powder continued to burn and produced a lot more of the colorful streaks. So a quick note on the sound. First of all, when this was under vacuum, you could still kind of hear me if you had headphones on. That's because my voice could actually conduct through the structure and to the camera. And also, you could hear the sound of the explosion as well. It was far more sharp. There was less of a rumble of the uh, sound waves. But there was still a pretty good sound that you could still hear on the camera. Uh, so what that was is you've got the gas produced from the explosion, the molecules are able to fly pretty much unimpeded until they strike the camera. And all that gas hitting the camera, of course, generates a bit of sound. So, hope you enjoyed, and Happy New Year.